Hey, you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. Back with you, another review. Um, doing a little bit of barrel aged triple time in the form of Barrel Amongst Brewings Morta, which is a Cabernet Barrel Triple. Uh, Bummerooski review time. I am drinking this as a homage, as a week, as a kind of just kind of want to drown my sorrows kind of beer. Um, to my beloved dog, Bisto, who uh, passed away today. Um, dropping a couple of reviews today, just because I'm Irish. I do the whole Irish wake thing. And, uh, honestly, I wasn't going to do it. Like, it wasn't like I was like, oh, let me kind of figure out a review scheme to do today. Um, I actually grabbed a couple of beers, and they all had names that just happened to be, you know what I mean, something to do with the theme of today. And this one struck me, because it was like, okay, I had, um, a, you know, Bureau sent me, a, a growler got in the mail, and this one was sent to me, and, you know, sorry to be a bummer to them, but this is sent to me by Barrel Monks. I did a couple of their beers, sent to me by Ralph, and uh, Florida Ralph, if you don't know, and uh, they ended up sending me a box of beers. Um, I actually did two of those beers review-wise already, um, but I haven't posted any of them, and this one will go up first, because this is, you know, going to be posted the day I review it, November 7th. And um, this is called Morta. And on the back here, it actually explains the whole kind of um, idea of the beer and what it's all about. And on the back, it says, The three fates in ancient mythology were incarnations of destiny. Uh, they controlled the metaphorical thread of life of every mortal from birth to death. Um, in Roman mythology, Morta, uh, Atropos in Greek, is the fate responsible for the end. She cuts the thread of life. Three Fates is a barrel of Monk's Triple, and Morta's a version of that beer that was aged in Cabernet wine barrels for several months. It is developed as a wonderful wine-like quality from the barrels, lightly tart and rich in complex oak and wine aromas and flavors. Um, this very special barrel-aged beer is being bottled for our Brotherhood Club. Uh, the Brotherhood is a barrel Monk's private club with benefits including access to such special reserves as this one. Here's to our Brotherhood members. We appreciate your support. This beer should age well. First things first, thank you very much for sending me. I, you know, Barrel Monk sent me awesome beers. This is obviously like a, 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 a like a club only, like the uh, society only stuff. That in itself is super fucking cool. But, you know, I, I love me some wine barrel aged stuff. Some wine barrel aged stuff, specifically Belgian wine barrel aged stuff. So hopefully this fits the bill. And like I said, a name kind of comes full circle. Um, you're going to get a little review. You're going to get a little bit of kind of drowning my sorrow and stuff in this. So if that's not your bag or whatever, have at it. Um, late wise, it's cool. Dig it. You know, kind of wine, champagne ish kind of pattern. Uh, I mean, the outline of the label. Nice graphic on it. Nothing crazy. My dog Bisto. Awesome dog. 10 years old, very young. Um, just kind of went, took a turn for the worse and. You know, you might have seen him. He's popped his head. He's always around. That's the thing. And that's why I'm doing this. He's He's been very intertwined in my life as far as beer is concerned. He goes to breweries with me all the time. He's very popular at the breweries that he visits. And he's uh, an amazing dog. Um, I've had, God, I've had a couple dogs in my lifetime. I still have another dog, Mika. She's fantastic. But Bisto is a special dog. People who meet him said he was a special dog. People who have dogs, when they say, my dog's special, and uh, and they go, well, everybody's dog's special. And then they meet Bisto, and they go, no. That's a special dog. So, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know. It's kind of what we Irishmen do and get a little bummer rooskies. So, what did we have here? Uh, we had a bit over a pinky finger of a head that was rocky with a little bit of creaminess on top. It's dissipated quickly. It's a Belgian, so you're going to generate a head. Cabernet barrel, so it's going to die off quick. So, you know what I mean? Kind of expected. It's got a really beautiful orange color to it. You know? Um, soft orange. Um, nothing too crazy. A little soft carbonation. But she looks like a bit hazier, more kind of apple cider leaning kind of view-like of a triple. But that's kind of where I like them. I like my Belgian or Belgian-esque beers kind of kind of skew towards that kind of hazy realm. That's where I think they really kind of dial themselves in. So it's cool to see an American brewery get it that way, even if they did a little bit of barrel aging along the way. We're doing a nose portion of the show, if you didn't know. That's nice. There's an apple 
vibe to the whole thing, which I really want my triples. A lot of times when you talk about apple beers, uh, people kind of immediately go to your negatives, your flaws in beer. It's not necessarily a bad thing, especially when it comes to Belgians. It's an apple thing. It's not like a, it's a green apple, but it's not a tart, soury apple thing. It's a nice, rich, kind of mature, kind of somewhere between golden and, you know, green apple thing. But that's only the start of the show here. You get a nice kind of spiciness on top of it. It's not like a crazy over in your face kind of spiciness. It's more of a subtle kind of coriander y kind of Cezanne, Belgian Cezanne kind of spiciness. Big enough to show its face. You get a bit of caramel in there. You get a, bit, a little bit of caramel. It's not getting date and figgy. It's not getting raisin any. It's a soft caramel. Where is that coming from? It could be a malt thing, but I think it's a combination of the malt and the barreling going on. I think it's about a combination of the barrel, malt, and then you have this underlying, or overlying, I should say, kind of um, funky tartness. Um, that makes you want to think it's kind of like a crazy verging on sour thing, but it's not. It's that Cabernet barrel coming through. It's a little bit meaty. It's a little bit savory. It's a little bit kind of chewy. A big beer. Robust beer, but complex beer. A lot of moving parts here. Good mosh. Good, uh, good send-off. Yeah. She smells delicious. Awesome. Delectable. Hopefully you taste that way. Cheers. Quite a bit muted in mouth. I thought there was going to be a bit more there. It's still there. But it's on a much smaller scale. I think it might come back though. By that, I think I was expecting more. I want to let it sit. I want to take a couple sips. I want to let it kind of develop. So we're going to go into story time again. My dog, Bisto. Like I said, he would travel to breweries with me. He would do everything with me. When you watch these re reviews, there might be some old ones. I actually forgot. I've been doing it so long that, like, you don't know what's going on behind this camera. He's back there. He's looking at me. He's kind of making faces at me. I think a couple times he jumped up. While I was doing reviews, I'll have to backtrack and see if I can track him down. But I've done, you know, a thousand deep now, so it might be hard. But, um, it's an awesome dog. And, um... Uh, you know, it was one of those weird things where I've done tons of reviews in my life. And I drank a bunch of beers in my life. But I never gave him beer. Never gave him beer. Because he's allergic to everything on earth. And, uh... He always tried to sneak that shit. Always, man. Constantly. You know? And, uh... I just, you know, I'd always catch him. I'd leave my beer somewhere, and I'd go to see his, stick his nose, and I'm like, ah. I mean, I'm sure he sneaked in there, but I never actually caught him. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Dude loved beer, and I even know he never had it before. Went to enough breweries, probably licked enough floors to where he had enough beer to really kind of develop probably a better pellet than I do, but. Anyway, back to the beer. Yeah. It has a rich kind of apple cider vibe to it that's your cabinet barrel working with that triple that spiciness is there that fruit component that apple component is there but not as big as I want it to be there's a little bit of kind of tinge of heartburn which makes me think there's an acidity in there it's not been flushed out as big as it could be but it's still really nice it's got a really beautiful roundedness to it that caramel is still caramel um, usually when they talk about that caramel kind of nose and it develops into something a bit more robust, it's still there. This is a drinkable beer. This is like a big, robust, heavy duty, gentle beer. Um, you know what I mean? A big kind of tumbling, whirling dervish of, 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 of delicateness. Um, it, it, it would be like a weird beer that to where I think it would complement 
food things. If you want to talk about, you know what I mean, going into a dish and you want the beer to be the star of the show, I think this beer would work that way. But at the same time, if you want a beer just to complement food, you could work that way too, depending on what you're trying to do. It's definitely kind of like, you know, a jammy kind of thing. You're kind of apricot orange, kind of marmalade I can't believe I said that word, kind of thing. Composed with like, it can be go to a couple different directions, what I think is kind of cool and versatile about the beer. I rarely talk about food, but it just makes me want to talk about it that way. It's nice. It's rounded. The roundness of the beer just does it for me. It just makes me kind of think this beer has a ton of time on it. Um, it says here 213.17. I assume that is the date on the beer uh, by 213 day of 2017. So it doesn't have much time on a couple months. Um, being that this is November 7th, but, um, but yeah, super tasty beer, um, and just a nice wrap up. Uh, like I said, I kind of went into this, um, you know, uh, grabbing some beers and, and names made sense. So it kind of snowballed in this kind of weird come kind of memorandum beer review thing. Why? Because I like to talk about beer and I just like to talk about beer and I want to talk about my dog. I don't know, but, um. But yeah, just kind of worked that way. And, you know, name it a beer. You know what I mean? Morta combined with the end of life just kind of seemed a little bit apropos. So let's do a quick wrap-up of it. Um, is it one of the better barrel-aged Belgian-style beers I've had as late? Definitely in the discussion. Uh, I'm not a leader in a pack. I've had ones that have done me better, but quite nice. Uh, it's Belgian, and I didn't talk about that, um, and I should. Um, because when my running theme with a lot of American breweries, it definitely comes off Belgian in the soul, uh, which I think is very important for a lot of American breweries. I mean, you want to, you want to make your own beer. You don't want to be a facsimile. You don't want to be a copy center of what other people do, but you definitely want to have this kind of intangible center to the beer that just kind of makes sense. And, and it has that, it has that kind of thoughtfulness and that and that gentleness and that kind of that Belgian soul that so many breweries fail to capture you know what I mean so it has that going for it but it just comes off a little bit I don't know I think I'm nitpicking it too much I think I'm too much in a bummer risky mode it, it's delicious I shouldn't I shouldn't poop on it it's a Belgian triple uh the the barrel comes through in a nice Chardonnay um, the, the wine itself comes through uh, enough to make you, let you know it's there and gives you enough acidity. The spiciness of the Belgian yeast comes through. Uh, the sweetness of them all comes through. It's, it's, it's built very well. So uh, it's probably more my bummer is coming through more than... I should be a little bit more ecstatic about the beer, let's put it that way. But quite nice. I feel like there is a bit to grow in there. I feel like the beer has a bit to grow. Is that an age thing? I don't think so. These barrel-aged Belgians... It, it, time will tell whether they last the test of time. Um, bottle condition, fine. Throw a barrel in the mix, I don't know. But it's tasty, it's delicious, it's nice. I just believe there's something that could grow out of it. Maybe I'm nitpicking. Faggot availability, uh, apparently it's society only. Thank you very much, guys. And, uh, uh, you know, value, I don't know. It's probably built in the society. So, um, leave you with, if you like what you like, yes. If you like good beer. If you like, uh, Belgian beer. If you like triples, if you like barrel-aged wine beers. And if you like paying homages. And this is where you shut it off. If you don't want to listen to me gush about things. So, like like I said, I kind of felt like, uh, you know, drinking some beers. And I ended up grabbing three beers um, from my cooler. I have, like, a little beer cooler I keep in my kitchen. And one was called Lonely Blonde. One was called um, Nonsense. And one was called Morta. And I was looking at them, and I'm like, this makes kind of sense. You know, the one beer was called Nonsense. It was Nonsense lonely and morto which is death so it, it i didn't plan it you know what i mean it's kind of worked that way and um you know take that for what it's worth i'm not a religious guy i don't sit here and talk about um you know afterlife and things like that i actually don't believe in religion but i do believe in karma i do believe in good good people and good things and uh you know i lost my best friend today some people are weird about that. You know what I mean? Some people are like, it's a dog, man. Or it's like, oh, I'm sorry you lost your dog. Um, my dog was in my life, man. And I have two. 
you know, and they're both fantastic. But uh, I don't want to trivialize my other dog, Minka, but Bisto was a special dog, man. He was, he was one of a kind. Um, anybody that met him actually said so. And that's people, the other dog going, you know what, your dog is pretty fucking fantastic. And, uh, and that would be when my other dog was standing next to my other dog. And it just, it's, it's a killer, man. Um, it's a bummer. I don't know what to do, you know? Having to make that call, having to come so quick, it was a quick thing. It wasn't like something that was long and drawn out. And, uh, and, uh, he accompanied me, like, in, in the beer world, you know? We went to so many breweries together. Had so many kind of, he was life at a party at shares that I held at my house. And, you know, uh, you know, the barbecues that I had that were, you know, beer centric or otherwise, he was, you know, he was king of the show, you know? And, uh, you know, it's a weird thing. You know, sometimes you, I'm an, I'm an eternal guy. You know, I sit here and yammer and all camera and I kind of spout, uh, shit. This boh, verbal diary at you guys about what I think about beer. Um, is it because I'm insecure? Is it because I don't know this, don't know that, and I just feel like I need to do it? I don't know why I do it. I just fucking find it fun, and I like beer, and the industry's cool, and whatever. Um, but I share a lot, but I don't share a, a ton of stuff, you know what I mean? I've kind of dripped and drab personal bits of my life, but I've never, never actually shared uh, the good big portions of it, and he's been probably the biggest portion of the past 10 years of my life. He was 10 years old, and just want to do a little kind of, you know, homage, you know, I'm going to be dead and gone, but I'm pretty sure YouTube would still exist. And, um, and just to know that bits and pieces of his memory will be out there. Um, it's kind of cool. So, so it's kind of chugging a beer to him. You know what I mean? Chugging three beers to him actually. And, um, you know, just kind of doing the Irish wake thing that I've mentioned enough to where you know what's going on and, and just saying, enjoy. And that's the, that's the thing. That, I wanted to touch on that. I don't want to fucking beat a dead horse. But, it, it, again, you might find it trivial that I'm talking about a dog this way. But, enjoy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, whether it be personal grievances, vendettas, or whatever. You know what I mean? Life is meant to be enjoyed. Beer is a, a great glue to that. You know what I mean? A lot of people actually um, find common ground over beer. Um, a lot of people find, you know what I mean? A lot of things over beer. I'm finding a little bit of closure, a little bit of solace from beer. You can find a little, little, little bit of everything from it. But what I'm trying to say is all the things you try to find from point A to point B can be a little bit... You know what I mean? Shorter than you'd like it to be. Uh, whether it be canine, whether it be human, whether it be whatever you choose. Um, enjoy it. Enjoy good beer. Enjoy good people. Try not to get too serious about it, says the guy yammering into a camera. And, uh, yeah. Here's the Ubis, though. Love you forever, bud. Cheers. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Hmm? What's up, Snow?
<laughs> now you gonna follow me? You guys are seriously going to have a fight on top of me. Drives them nuts. You don't even care. <laughs> He's so gentle. Like when he grabs and pulls. Yeah, it's just the only time she squeals is accident. Or she really doesn't like it. Her, she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. She just. He freaks out when she squeals too. Oh, I know. He gets all nervous. Yeah. He backs up. Well, he knows. He's a dog. He can. He knows dog. <laughs> look at his puff. Look at his puffy cheeks. My office. Though. I'm surprised you gave up. You're turning into an old man, kiddo. <laughs> Put her butt in his butt in her face. Huh, puh? <laughs> Did she just headbutt him? <laughs> like real hard. Okay. Oh, look at he, he really is playing though. He's not even trying to be aggressive. He's actually doing to her what we do to him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not to be much. fucked up. The only difference is he can't say it, like, all the way. <laughs> eh, 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 eh. I know where you're going with that. <laughs> yeah. You pervy little man.
Good. Hey, you want the ball? Go get it, buddy. Give him the ball. Come on, jerk. Let go. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, you know, it's like work. 